So yeah, Will and Steve, thanks for coming. Thanks for having you. Obviously, we got your titles there, but it'd be great if uh, you guys could give a little intro um, to yourselves and your roles at BA Systems, uh, as well as just a couple of sentences for anyone who doesn't know. Um, yeah, what you guys, uh, what BA Systems do and stand for, and uh, yeah, and then we'll run through the presentation. Yeah, absolutely. I'll um, I'll take you through a little bit more about BA Systems uh, in a second in the next few slides, but just introducing myself first and then I'll pass over to my colleague, Will. So I'm Steve Robinson. I manage our UK graduate and undergraduate programmes, um, of which we have um, several hundred in the in the UK. And again, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about those, about those later. Um, I've been with the organisation for, for for a number of years, and, and really excited about um, being able to talk to talk to you all today about um, the systems a little bit more, and also the uh, the graduate and undergraduate opportunities which we which we have in our organisation. And if will, if you want to share a little, I'm not sure if Will's dropped off there, oh. Justin. All right. Okay. Um... Shall I proceed? If I proceed with yeah, the overview we'll, of the systems while you get while yeah, you get yeah, back let's in. go on to the um yeah well, let's do the yeah who what where um and then yeah. see if we can get yeah get Will back on okay um well we might be the the, the largest company that that some of you may never have heard of and um, certainly certainly in the UK um so I've got a couple of slides just to bring to life a little bit more about who we are what we do the type of products and services that we offer. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about our, our graduate and undergraduate programs, which I guess a number of you are quite interested to, to learn a little bit more about. And again, as, um, uh, as Justin Neil teed up, we've, I think we've got some time at the end just to go through some sort of your specific questions, we're going to drill down to any, any areas and specifically more. So in terms of who we are, um, uh, we, we serve, we supply, we protect those who serve and protect us, you know, put, put quite simply. Um, we, sort of context and size wise, we, we employ sort of close to 90,000 people uh, across the globe, um, typically focusing in, 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 in the four main countries, which we'll talk about in a second, but, but across 40 different uh, countries we have employees to, today. If you move on to the next slide for me, for me, Justin. Thank you. Talking and again, just bring into life a little bit, a uh, little bit more about us. So we are a global defence supplier and and. and uh, uh, world, I guess, world leading innovator, which is why um, the guys today have asked us to talk a little bit more about and focus on the, the engineering sector as some of the uh, the, the um, activities that we undertake take us into some of the more well, the most complex engineering projects um, that, that we do, not just in the UK but, but worldwide as well. We we kind of bring ourselves into different sectors as an organisation, given our given our size and complexity, and um, sort of splitting ourselves into air. Uh, maritime land and also cyber security where we acquired a business several years ago so you know in particular this sort of moment in time we're growing quite a lot in, in the cyber security area and as i mentioned while we've got our 90,000 employees spread across the globe they're predominantly based in in the us and uk where we have around sort of 30 35,000 in, in those two locations but also um, a significant presence in, in the kingdom of saudi arabia and australia as well um, and again, just to kind of give some some sort of numbers wise, uh, 2020 we, we had sort of 20 billion billions worth of sales, and um, similar number in sort of 1918 and, and, and sort of prior to that. And also looking forward, we've got a kind of really healthy order book, and, and given some of the products which are there, I always will, will just will bring to life shortly. We, we tend to have very long order books in terms of decades worth of generate and sort of decades worth of, of work that we have going forward through, through some of the products that we design. And so because of that, we need to invest really, really heavily in the employees that we have. So we make significant contributions in terms of you know, investment and training into all our employees. Some typically um, we invest more in um, at the start of the careers, which is you know, probably what you're, what you're going to be approaching soon when you join potentially your first employer. Um, and then others at various different parts of the career, career journey. We're also a very large investor in, in what we call our supply chain. We can't do everything that you know, we, we see Twain to do. So we support um, tens of thousands of organizations through our, our supply chain. And just to give you an idea, you know, about 11 billion goes through that supply chain. So those areas that we do operate, we, we, again, we, we put a lot into the economy and the kind of markets of, of, of those areas. And if you just flick onto the next slide for me, if you would just in. 
I really wanted just to kind of highlight the, the purpose of the organization because um, we're, we're really kind of proud of, um, and lots of our employees are really sort of proud, and I'll bring this to life perhaps, perhaps later on, of, of what we do and, and, and why we do it as well. So, you know, I kind of talked about um, we're there to help our customers provide safety and security in their areas of operation. But we're really proud of the fact that we do make a significant contribution to the economies of those areas where we, 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 we live and work and we supply um, as an organization. And again, some of those numbers on that previous slide probably shows you the kind of amount of um, sort of contribution to economies that we're making through not just the, the direct employment of, of employees, but also through our supply chains or investment in those local communities, which again we see as something that's um, that's part of our responsibility as an organisation um, and as a large organisation to make those type of contributions to the areas that, that, that we operate in. We, we, um, we again we have particular programs that support people from disadvantaged backgrounds in those areas that that, that we work within, and we um, we also um, work with with a lot of our local communities in terms of investment programs. And and I'm, again, really sort of proud to to sort of say and, and recognise as a company, and um, we committed earlier on this year to set ourselves sort of zero um, greenhouse gas emissions by by 2030. Which um, yeah, really proud that, that, that the organisation I work for was able to kind of commit to that and we'll, we'll drive forward to that. It's been a real focus for us in terms of that sustainability as an organisation. And um, and again. It, it, as a company, we really focus on not just what we do, but but why we do it. And then I guess that we find that with lots of our employees, we really kind of connect into into that. And I was at this point just going to ask Will just to bring to life a little bit more on on and um, some of the things and products that we do. I can see Will's not joined us, but if we flick onto the next slide, Justin, I'll, I'll just bring those to bring those to life, and I'll just check my internal messaging system just to see whether. Um, Will's messaged me, which he hasn't at the moment. So I mentioned earlier the um, the way we break our organisation up into our, our sectors, our, our air, maritime, land and, land and cyber sectors. And um, I'm just getting a message, um, Justin, from Will, just say he has dialed in, but he's on his mobile, so I don't know whether you, you might be able just to bring him back in. I might just let you work on, um, on that offline. Yeah, I'll just carry on going. Yeah, keep, keep going. Neil, on, Neil's, I'm uh, yeah. it from my side, guys. Don't worry. You, you yeah. carry on and I'll, I'll, I'll try and get Will on. No problem. Well, a no big slide for you. So, so in our air sector, um, so we manufacture, develop a, a number of um, military aircraft. So some of you may be familiar with it, the Eurofighter Typhoon, um, the, the, the Hawk aircraft, the, the F-35 aircraft. And, and we supply these to predominantly the, the, the UK Ministry of Defence, but also to, um, to, to governments uh, uh, around the world, to Saudi Arabia, um, uh, America, Australia as well. So again, as, as well as engineering and designing those planes we also manufacture those planes and then we provide service support for for those planes we, tr we help train um uh, pilots that are going to be piloting those planes so from a engineering perspective there is a a, a huge investment in the organization and we need a, a a sort of huge range of engineers from our um uh, engineer from our uh, air industry but also engineers sort of right across the board to contribute to the design of, of these um sort of best in class um, uh, military aircraft that, that, that we produce. Moving into the sort of maritime sector, um, a really diverse sector for us. So we we build similar to we do with our with our um, with our aircraft, we design, we build uh, our nuclear submarine capability here in the UK. So we typically build those out of out of the site on the um, northwest coast uh, in, in the South Lakes called Barrow. And um, uh, again supporting the, the development and sustainability of, of those submarines also. We manufacture a, a number of the naval fleet for, for the UK government, but also through um, the Australian government as well in terms of their naval fleet. And again, provide that um, sort of in-service support as well. And if you can envisage the, the, the life of um, ships and submarines is, you know, you know sort of decades long. So providing that sort of in-service support and that continual engineering support to those um, uh, to those um, submarines and ships is, is an important part of our, of our, of our programme as well. And again, we're always developing those, adding new parts to them. So again, this is where the kind of the engineering through life cycle, as we call it, is, is really important to us as an organisation. From a land perspective, we, we, you know, we manufacture a number of combat vehicles um, uh, that again we supply to, to, the, to, the, to the UK Ministry of Defence. 
but also other other governments uh, across the world. And again, work on supporting the uh, sustainability of those of those vehicles. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the, the last few years we've been um, increasing and finding a lot more um, opportunity within the within the cyber space. So, um, like a cyber and security space. So again, we work with the, the UK and US government around um, the cyber security capabilities which exist within the um, within the defence sectors in, in those two countries. So through those kind of predominantly four areas, um, you can see a, a really sort of diverse portfolio of, of um, we call them platforms or you know, ships, planes, submarines, and also the equipment that goes onto those ships, planes and submarines, whether that be radar, whether that be um, uh, anti-tank armor, et cetera, et cetera, involved you know, through a number of the, um, of the products that we, that, that we offer in the organization. If you can just click onto the next slide for me, please, Justin. So, so hopefully some of you are hearing that and thinking, "Wow, what a what an interesting type of organisation to um, uh, to to work for, and be a part of." You know, how how do I um, register my interest, or what type of roles do do you offer as a as, a, as an employer? Well, I mentioned earlier, um, in the UK, we we offer a, it's over four hundred graduate. Um, uh, uh, roles we certainly have over 400 graduate roles currently advertised um, across a, a range of different disciplines. We also have um, just over 250 undergraduate opportunities as well, which we see as a yeah, and through undergraduate opportunities. I refer to summer interns, industrial placement students, um, and again we see those as a real um, pipeline through onto our onto our graduate programs. We we tend to and I've put them up on screen for everybody to see there. Um, although this is not an exhaustive list, this is typically where we see. Um, several of our, our, our roles that, that are currently advertised be, being within you know a number of engineering disciplines there around systems software manufacturing electrical etc but again if you're seeing uh, an engineering type or if you're not seeing a type of engineering role then it's something you aspire into or you're interested within please do visit our website because all our roles are live i just wasn't able to obviously list up all the different types of, of engineering opportunities that, that we have on our graduate program but we don't just do engineering roles and um, as you can imagine, to support a, a, an organisation as diverse and, and complex as ours, we have a number of, we call them business disciplines or business type roles um, to support. So whether that be finance, project management, commercial. We, 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 we said to me the other day, you seem to have a role for almost every um, uh, every type of role um, going in. And we, we do, we don't necessarily offer graduate and undergraduate roles in there. But what I would say is if you if you are interested in the organisation, if you are considering as a potential um, next step in, in your um, in your career, please do have a look on and see the number of roles that we that we have live today. We have opened all our vacancies live. All, um, so if you go onto the website today and apply, we do really apply a kind of um, closing them once we have enough applications. So we really do recommend early um, early applications and early um, uh, early investments and early uh, applications into the process so we can get you in and hopefully talk to you about the opportunities, but also allow you to find out the earliest opportunities you've been successful and um, with securing a role with us. And again, I've just sort of, Put some details on the right hand side around the slide if, if you'd like to connect with us whether that be via twitter facebook or indeed just visiting our website where you'll find the, the opportunity to apply for those uh, for those opportunities in terms of the graduate roles themselves we um we're really proud of our graduate program we've, we've been recruiting graduates into the organization for for, for decades and we see a number of our um uh, senior leads in the organization who've come through that route Will himself will join us. Was um, came in through one of our early career graduate program uh, schemes himself. We we see uh, graduates who progressed from the program um, into a number of our excited opportunities uh, you know, across the organisation, and we find that people are really passionate about this particular route that comes back in. So lots of people who are with us who've been through the program are really keen to help and support those people who who subsequently come and join us. We we've deliberately positioned the program as well in terms of wanting to offer early responsibility to people that join us. So we, we move away from the kind of forced rotation around our organization and, and aim to place people into a role that gives people early responsibility while sort of 
um, allowing them to get some contextualized learning through, through on the job responsibility. So that opportunity to really take on early responsibility, to be given objectives, to be given things to lead, given things to with the opportunity to influence it is a key part of our, our, our graduate program, as well as the development portfolio that we, that we wrap around as well. So again, shameless plug, but if this sounds of interest to you, have a have a connect with us, have a look at those opportunities. What my advice would do sooner rather than later. And that was all I wanted to share in terms of, of slides, Justin. Okay, great. Um, but while we just uh, on the slide, because I believe you also um, take on a lot of apprentices as well. And as Neil said, this will be going out to a lot of schools uh, and of a lot of students who will sort of be grappling with that. Do I go to university? Do I go the apprenticeship route? So it'd be great if you could, while we're on this slide now, um, just sort of touch on, yeah, the multiple apprentice roles you have. Yeah, absolutely. So to, we, we, I think we took on around about 800 apprentices into the, into or taking on around about 800 apprentices into the organisation in, in 2021. Those are, you know, I guess a variety of the apprenticeship type programs whether they be for people that are leaving school or coming as a higher apprentice or, or indeed as a um, as a degree apprentice so again those applications will be opening up um, uh, at various points during during the year i'd encourage you to go onto the, the same website just to learn a little bit more about those apprentice opportunities or again pre-register or see when those vacancies are, are opening in terms of the opportunities again they range across a number of those disciplines that you can see up on screen in front of you, but also some more of our traditional um, through manufacturing and, and technical routes that we that we offer as well. So again, um, please visit the website, find out a little bit more about um, our, our apprentices opportunities through there. Okay, great. Uh, right, let's get into um, some questions. Um, yeah, right, okay, stop sharing screen. Ah, oh, Will's here, perfect. Okay. Um, so it's basically the way it's, um, way it's sort of sectioned out is, uh, we've got some company orientated questions, industry specific questions, and then a few personal questions just to give us a bit of an insight into how you guys have got where you are today. Any, and any sort of, yeah, general personal tips, um, that you'd give, um, the, oh yeah, everyone watching, um, about, yeah, how they should be approaching their job search in general. Um, and also, yeah, how they can tell themselves, um, so yeah, one day in a position like yourselves. So, so to start with, um, what would you say are the top reasons people join BA Systems over uh, your competitors? Yep. Okay. And welcome back, Will. By the way, if I, if I pick these up, if that's okay, and then if you go into the next one, if that's all right, if you can hear us, okay. And um, yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think I would say you're probably getting a sense of the. The number of unique products we have as an organization you know the, the reality is in in the countries we operate in there's there isn't other opportunities let's take the uk for here for example that there's only one organization which manufactures submarines there's only one organization and um, uh, in, in the uk that um, works on the parts of the, the aircraft that are referenced earlier so if if you are you if you are looking for or wanting the opportunity to work on some of the type of engineering um uh, programs that we work on or work with some of the products or or indeed work in this type of um, type of work or experience then there aren't any other organizations that offer this type of, of um, uh, opportunity to work with products like we offer and again people often say to me that the ability to to walk out of one's office and, and see a see a jet taking off outside um, or see a submarine docked um, or been partly built or to see a ship harbored up um, out of your office window and knowing that you've contributed to a part of that, the build of that, the, the design of that um, is, is something that um, we really feel proud of and that not a lot, you know, that other organisations perhaps can't offer. I think I'd also say that the, the connection with our purpose and what we do, whether that be the, 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 I say the, the product and the, the reason that we develop those products, Hones true with individuals and connecting with that purpose being a real key of why of why people join us. And then I think the final final thing I'd say is that the program that we offer itself, the fact that we ask people to take on early responsibility, 
the fact that we we give early responsibility and the opportunities to to own activities to make a real difference early early on in the careers is something that we've we've noticed people really clambering for and people choosing us particularly the last couple of years when we went more down that direction than perhaps asking people to rotate around the organizations in you know every sort of in a quite a structured way and that's that's really why um or some of the yeah, i guess some of the key reasons that that we find that people seek to join us and, and seek to seek to stay with us as well which i think is equally as important yeah yeah brilliant um i just want to check will uh can you hear us or is everything all right from your end no i don't think oh no oh, no yeah no that's Neil. Um, no, that's me yeah i don't think will's got sound <laughs> ah oh, yeah oh dear um <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll jump on the phone with will you, you two carry on okay yeah okay perfect um all right so following on from that um what would you say are your top three pieces of advice for um yeah graduates and soon to be ones that um yeah are hoping to apply uh, for roles at ba systems either yeah this year or next year mm -hmm. um i would say apply now but i guess that's the message from you you're hearing a lot today but uh, and if you're hearing it a lot we're, we're saying it for a reason as employers i think do your research into to an organization i think it's rings true for, for any organization you apply for and um, in terms of do your research to, to make sure it's the kind of organization that you want to work with the work that you're going to be doing you will find interesting the reason that you um the organization exists aligns to your own personal values but also when you come to should you be fortunate enough to, to, to come to a final interview stage I think having understood the organization being able to talk about the organization the products they're involved in and um, the share price the um, the more information the, the, the um, that you can give and that you know about the organization will make you stand out to, 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 to employees and people on it quite honestly that are assessing you of whether we, you should be offered a role or not because that's the kind of we want to understand your passion to work for our particular company not just the, the job that you'll be doing but why to you know why us as an organization mm. and i think being true to yourself so again during the application process by understanding an organization by understanding its purpose its culture have a think about where these things align to your own personal values uh, again you will find and you will operate best where you are comfortable and you are in a in an environment which shares your values um, and again you know you're a long time at work you've got a, a long career ahead of you choose an employer that, that really kind of aligns to those and will and um, help you develop in those spaces but also kind of aligns to to your to your purpose okay, great. and then and then i'm sorry just, just one final thing i think what i'd say is um just when you're in that application process you may think that you don't have a wide amount of experience to talk about, but in your, you know, in your careers today, to your, um, think about examples from university, think about any kind of part-time experience that you've had. We're really keen to hear about these examples because actually some of those traits that you will have, um, you will have picked up, part-time roles or courses at university, are the kind of things that we're really keen to hear about. You know, you talk to us about. Mm. Okay, brilliant, and. Um sort of going off that um what do you what would you say makes um one graduate stand out from another within mm. within the a systems and like yeah do you have any sort of examples of that yeah it's a, it's a really good question um i think i touched earlier we we have a real focus in not just what we do but but how we do it and if i can bring that to life it's really important to get the job done and to, to, to meet objectives and, and, and to fulfill contracts. But we don't want to do that at the expense of a kind of trail of destruction kind of behind and, and to having a culture where people feel like they're not able to speak up or um, not able to have a, have a voice. So we, we have a set of behaviours in the organisation that we, we typically look to our employees to, to demonstrate. Um, and these are to, you know, typically for people in, um, who are joining as, as graduates or at any point in their, their early careers journey. Um, if I could think about three, three, just honing in on three of those, courage being one of them. I think the ability to, to speak up. So being new into an organisation as, as a graduate, it can be quite intimidating, you know, working with people that can be really experienced or the way things have always been, been done. Never be afraid to speak up if, if you're thinking, Ooh, what does that mean if you have a question the chances are the majority of the people in the room are 
or indeed never be afraid to put your put your opinions across um, particularly we as an organization are wanting to change the way we work and that's why we, we put such emphasis on um, uh, people at the start of their careers where we have such a pipeline of people coming into the organization and we can only make that change through people early on in their careers or at any point helping us make some of those changes so speaking up and, and demonstrating courage i think is one being adaptable and um, is another one uh, so again as an organization we need to evolve and we look towards all our employees to help us do that stepping outside of one's comfort zone and being you know being more adaptable and more comfortable to change which can feel really uncomfortable particularly when you're new into a company and you're um, going through your own change curve and your own learning process as well but staying adaptable staying agile wanting to 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 to, to, to see changes see change as, as, as an advantage rather than um, something that potentially um, can cause um, uh, can cause barriers. And I think the final thing is, I, I would say, that the graduates that, that do tend to stand out, the ones that, that, that want to self-develop, that want to continuously learn, that have that mindset of um, curiosity, that want to keep on exploring and learning, um, and carry that on not just through their the early years on a graduate program but as they progress in the in the organization and continue to, to want to develop themselves oh. okay brilliant will are you hearing us all okay we, we we have a solution we don't have video we've got video and we're going to do sound through, through my phone right perfect that's that's the solution that we've <laughs> okay, come up great. with a bit of problem solving in the background a bit of engineering going on uh but we're all right, well, loudspeaker now on my side okay Perfect. Well, yeah. Larry, Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you fine. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, yeah. Now well, well done, Steve, for holding the force whilst we were trying to get this sorted out in the background. My pleasure. My pleasure. You, you might have dialed off, Will, but we didn't get the chance to introduce you if you if you if you want to do that briefly. Yeah. So apologies, everybody, for the uh, issues that I've been having with my uh, various Apple devices, but I'm here now. Um, so I'm Will Shooter. I'm the head of engineering function for BA Systems Maritime Submarines. So basically what that means is that I'm uh, responsible for uh, the engineering capability within our submarines business unit. So all of our people, all of our processes, tool sets and infrastructure. Um, I've been in the company uh, for 13 years and I, I, I started off as a graduate, so I've um, been with the company all my, all my time really. Okay, brilliant. And now we've, yeah, now we've got you both here, it'd be great uh, to move on to the industry-based questions. And I think to start with, what would you say is the biggest misconception about either BA systems or working in the defence industry in general? Do you want me to pick that one up, uh, Steve? So, um, so, so I think there, there are some uh, misconceptions about the type of people or the type of person who works within the defence industry. And if I was uh, probably being a bit sort of unkind, it's probably people think it's around, you know, you have to be a white middle-aged male, um, which is clearly not the case. You know, if we think across the company, we're, we're a diverse group of people who've got really diverse um, ways of thinking and approaching problems and um, solving issues. And that's so important for us as a company um, because we need that diversity of thinking, that diversity of background and, and, and thought to help us challenge some of the most complex uh, problems that exist within the planet. Um, a real strength for us to be honest and something which we're you know striving to do even better in brilliant steve anything to add no i think will summed it up really well there. I'd, I'd particularly say that that and not just in defense but particularly with the sort of engineering side as well and um, particularly particularly important very really good okay cool and what would you say is um going to be the next golden opportunity within your industry where yeah golden opportunity for growth or the newest area that's gonna um where you know there's i would imagine there's plenty of you yourselves and your competitors are trying to sort of get in first uh to take control of that sort of new market where, where would you say that's going to be um so so 
maybe maybe this is an engineering question a bit as well. So um, there's there's I think um, autonomy and uh, the the use of autonomous systems is going to be quite a, an interesting market place for the defence industry going forward and you can already begin to see that um, in terms of the products which are being uh, developed um, across the marketplace and so that then brings a whole sort of plethora of engineering skill sets and um, you know uh, cross-functional skill sets and and ways of thinking which are going to be needed in order to support that move to to greater levels of autonomous systems. Um, so I think that's going to be quite an interesting opportunity for the for the defence sector going forward. Um, and I guess sort of related to that then is around um, data and um, the ability to uh, handle, manage, analyse large volumes of data in order to give you superiority um, in the in the battle space. Um, so I think that's again going to be quite a, a an interesting uh, area of development for the company as we look into the future. Having said all of that, though, um, there are some fundamentals which are going to continue to exist and which are going to be really important to us as a as an organisation. And I did I did you know hear Steve talking about some of those, but you know the behaviours around courage and inspiration and strategic thinking um, and. Um, people who can bring those kind of behaviours to bear are going to be so fundamentally important for us as an organisation. They're important now and definitely going to remain important into the future. Okay, great. And um, just the last of these uh, industry questions, what would you say are the three main benefits of a career in your industry, whether it's whilst, you're, whilst it's something you... Um, yeah, I guess get a sense of why you're in the industry or perhaps it's something um, that, yeah, if you choose to leave, it's something that you can take with you that um, make it such a fantastic place to start your early career. Go on, Steve, I'll take this one as, as well then, since you've done all the talking today. Um, so, um, so for me, I'm an engineer, so I'm passionate about the products that we make. Um, and I think there are few organizations within within the UK and across the world that make products as interesting and exciting and complex and demanding and challenging as we make so you know if you think about the complexity of a of a nuclear powered submarine it's vast um, we have a bit of a running joke within submarines because the managing director says that we need sort of rocket scientists and the engineers always say no 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 rocket scientists aren't good enough we need we need uh, nuclear submarine designers um, because they're so complex as a product um, so that for me is sort of one of the most exciting aspects about the industry we've got to bring together all of these various different um, specialisms and skill sets and integrate them successfully in order to deliver a product as complex as a as a fighter aircraft or a or a submarine or a, or a complex warship um the other thing I, I guess i think from my perspective is around um the connectivity with the with the customer so the the end user you know the the sailors the soldiers um, um that are that are using our products and you know we know that we're making a difference we can see that Equally, we can see that if we've got it wrong on occasion, we can um, present our, our end users at, at, at in harm's way. So it's really important, the work which we do, and it sort of focuses the mind every day that, that what we do is of significance. I mean, if you know, think about a nuclear submarine, if we get if we get the design wrong, then we could potentially place our sailors in, in real harm's way. So that's, that's, you know, really important from, from my perspective. The other thing which I, I have valued um, throughout my career um, and I think is, has been really strong within VA systems is the level of support that you get. Um, so I entered the business on one of the graduate programmes. Um, I've, I've always had line managers, you know, bosses who've taken a personal interest in me as an individual and have supported me with my career development. I've had loads of opportunities presented to me on the back of that. I've been able to work abroad. Um, I've worked across all of the UK. I've worked across multiple products. Um, 
and that fundamentally is because of the level of support and trust which um, the business has placed upon me and the support which I've got from from leaders within the business to support me. Okay, great. And moving on to, um, so yeah, that's the end of our industry questions. But Steve, it'd be great if you could answer this one about, um, so how do you think the career market has changed now um, for early professionals? So in terms of a lot more um, portfolio orientated, um, personal branding, the sort of, the, you know, the 2-1 is just enough to get you in the door now. And it's much more around what else are you doing? Who are you as a person? Um, and a lot less of, you know, yeah, what degree you got and who potentially your parents know, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely massive. Um, I guess some, yeah, some of the examples there are just <clears throat> just just not on radar today. You know, you talk about kind of two ones and um, you know the systems to you know we, we look at kind of two twos as, as minimums. We deliberately made that move. Now, uh, uh, Will touched on this earlier. So one thing that we absolutely need our um, graduates um, to, to help us do as an organisation is to is to change change the way we think. And, and you know, Will talked about that diversity of thought. And that's what we're that's what we're looking that's what we we're looking for and what we want and where i think in the past organizations may have focused solely on what somebody's done at university and what what they've achieved we're really looking for people who who can come with the mindset and the right the right mindset and bring that into the organization whether that be behavior or whether that be kind of that's first for learning because actually a lot of the jobs that we are doing today in the organization just what exist in two years time five years time so we need people who can adapt and change with that we don't and um, we, we say we want people who are able to recognize but but develop themselves and, and build that role and kind of help grow and adapt as, as that goes forward so i think that mindset and that type of person has potentially shifted from from one who can maybe specialize and do something quite niche to, to somebody who can be open-minded and be willing to, to, to change and learn and to adapt in, in, in the modern day. Okay, perfect. Um, and so, yeah, to be more personal, I think uh, it'd be great to hear from both of you about what would you say, um, the, what's the most important lesson you've had so far in your career? <sighs> Interesting one. Do you, want, do you want me to go, Steve? Um, yeah, so, please, yeah. So, so I think I think maybe it's a, a sort of a natural, a natural evolution or natural progression of of people as they begin to be more comfortable in the workplace and environment. But I think the biggest lesson for me was around um, not expecting to be perfect and valuing that. Um, and um, you know, when I when I joined the company, I'd had a reasonably reasonably good start of life in terms of you know getting a degree and stuff like that, and so I had sort of uh, preconceptions about what all that meant. But then coming into the workplace, you know, there's a whole new environment in which you need to learn how to to operate successfully, and you get loads of support around that. Um, but inevitably, things are going to go wrong, and you might make a mistake. But that's absolutely fine. In fact, it's more than fine because you need to do that to be able to learn successfully. I would argue. And one of the good things about the company is that um, I've always found that you, it, it allows you to make those sort of mistakes to help you learn from them. That gives you exposure to making more, you know. So it allows you to take a few calculated risks because it recognises that. In, in so doing, you are growing as an individual, and you're becoming more and more value as a uh, valuable as an individual in in the company. Um, and I think it took me a bit of a while to realise that, that actually that's okay, and it's and it's what we should be doing. Um, and so you know, when I have sort of mentoring conversations with with early careers um, across the company, I, I quite often sort of see myself in the type of conversation which is had and, and try to provide that. That level of reassurance that that actually you know in in learning you're going to make mistakes but that's perfectly fine mm. and the key thing is around how you respond to it and the behaviors that you demonstrate in terms of in terms of responding to it 
great, Steve. Mm. Yeah, that's a really good example. Um, I think from my own personal experience, somebody once said to me, see, see change as an opportunity. And I didn't quite know what that kind of meant at the time. That the, the, I was going through a period where I was in a role which I absolutely loved and it was it was going to be changing. But actually, that the opportunity that that enabled kind of took me out of my comfort zone and made me try something new, something I would never have, have, have looked to do previously if I hadn't been I was thrust, in, thrust into that. And the, the reality is things are changing constantly. And, and the majority of that change is out of out of your control. Um, and one of the things that we, we, we do on the graduate programme, because we recognise dealing with change can be quite a challenge. We, we, we have um, a core uh, personal effectiveness training programme that we ask all our graduates, undergraduates to, to go through. And there's, there's some one to one coaching that's part of that. And we help people kind of adapt to that change journey and also help them adapt to things called imposter syndrome, which is where people sort of feel that they're not good enough to be here and why have they kind of been chosen. And that's a real thing that we see graduates suffering with when they join our organisation with some really experienced, really experienced people. So wrapping a, a development framework around those people and, and helping them adapt to change and, and embracing change is something that I was personally really passionate about bringing into our, our, our graduate development offer to enable people who, who go through that, that change journey, similar to what, to what I've been through as, as, as an employee. But that was probably the, the most effective piece of advice that, that I've taken that, that, that comes to mind. OK, great. And just conscious of time. Should we um, some more questions? Yeah. Um, if that's right. Should we... then... Yeah, go on, Neil. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Justin, for, for doing all that and, and asking all those questions. And hello again, everyone. Um, <laughs> you're right, Will. Um, <laughs> Thank you for helping me out. <laughs> me and Will have been talking up and down for half an hour trying to sort it all out. But we've found a solution, which I guess is a lot, lot of like what engineering is like and, and, what, uh, and what you guys do down at PAE. Probably Usually like, we design better solutions than this. I was going to say, pro it's probably more complicated, um, you know, creating a submarine <laughs> than it was solving this problem. But, you know, I, I like to think I did all right. Um, so <laughs> we've had some great questions come through. And this one is, is one that I want to know the answer to as well. So if anyone's got any questions, please use the ask a question button. It's much easier for me to track. Um, but with such a diverse list of roles and areas, how, how can people decide what, which area is best for them? And I think, you know, if, if you're looking to go into a certain industry or a company like yours, there is such a plethora of different roles and areas and sectors that you could work in. How do people make that decision? Or, or is there opportunity for people to go and work in different departments? Do you want me to say this, Will, and then please build on anything? onto it and um, yeah absolutely so uh, what i would say is one of the reasons why we offer the opportunity to come and spend some time working with us prior to, to joining us on our on a graduate program so as i mentioned we offer a number of, of summer internship programs the chance to join us with for 12 weeks over the summer or spend 12 months with us as part of an industrial placement to, to get an understanding of the, the type of work that we that we undertake we, you know, we, we also undertake events like this. We, we're very active in terms of um, engaging with students through careers fairs and also at, at universities. Plus, we have quite a raft of information on our um, uh, internet site as well, where you can know a little bit more about the different types of roles. So those disciplines that I spoke about earlier, there's further information which just gives you um, an idea of what type of um, what, what type of work there are, plus descriptions of the type of work that you'll that you'll undertake. And, and that's not to say that you know should you join us in a role and you, you come into that and you just think this just isn't for me. And um, I think I'd be I'd be really good perhaps you know just over there. And um, just put your hand up be bold you know have that kind of courage to sort of say and um, and again the organization being the size that it is is able to have a you know quite an honest conversation to say um, and and help people kind of into the career paths that, that may be best suited for them because it takes a little bit of time to figure these things out so again it's all about sometimes learning as will mentioned earlier you know being comfortable to kind of put your hands up and testing things out as you go fantastic i was, I was just going to say exactly the same points to you in terms of you know don't worry that you might have got it wrong there's there's so many opportunities in the business that you know if you do think oh actually my skill set might be better placed elsewhere put your hand up and and there are always the opportunities available really 
Yeah, I think they're both great answers. I mean, there, there's been a common theme that's been running through this with the people talking about their own professional experience. And and so many people have said that, that, that same point around don't be afraid to make mistakes. And within that same vein, if you think you have made a mistake, make sure that you talk about it, make sure you put your hand up, you know? And I think a lot of people are afraid, you know, they've got this graduate position and you know, it took a lot of work to get there. That if they say something like, oh, you know, actually I don't really think this is right for me, that there's, there's gonna be, they're gonna be condemned in some way. It's just not the case, you know? A lot of the time people are hired because of who they are and their general problem solving, their general attitude, rather than that specific skill set, right? And that's what you develop over over the years. So yeah, fantastic, fantastic answer. Um, so th there's a few different ones here that I wanna go through. Um, so uh, speaking of cybersecurity, do you provide any opportunities for graduates or students in their penultimate years? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So as I mentioned, the summer internship is open to anybody, any, any career point in, in degrees. And um, again, opportunities, we run a number of things through our cybersecurity business. We're doing a, uh, an event at the moment, which is um, one we're running for, for anybody to sign up to in terms of unlock or a particular coding challenge to, to undertake. So again, this gives you a kind of feel for this sort of type of work that might be undertaken. Again, you can access that through ubasystems.com. Um, so again, hopefully that kind of gives a bit of an insight in terms of some of those undergraduate programs that are aimed at, you know, not just people in the first couple of years, but also people who, who, who might be coming up towards the end of the studies. Fantastic. I think um, this is this quite a good question from Irfan. It's quite a granular one, um, and so I'm not sure who's best to answer it, but I'm a chemical engineer undergraduate looking for a placement at BAE. What engineering disciplines would best suit the skills taught in chemical engineering? Towards towards what sorry um so what what so chemical engineering undergraduate what disciplines would best suit the skills taught in chemical engineering so if i had a chemical en engineering degree and i was thinking about a career at bae where would i best fit in that company okay so interesting question so um i'm probably i'll, I'll try to take this one steve so please your answers here. so on the one hand um clearly as an engineering community there's there's value um associated with the sort of specific discipline um, which you learn from a graduate perspective. Um, so I'm sort of thinking from chemical engineering point of view, it roles within um, submarines are associated with those particular kind of skill sets, um, particularly around sort of nuclear uh, engineering, etc. However, there's, a, there's also a, a broader point, which is associated with the sort of the way of thinking and uh the sort of logic and the structure which is equally applicable irrespective of which engineering discipline you sit with it and if i talk about my own sort of background so so i did civil engineering at university actually um and i think it's pretty safe to say i haven't i haven't done a civil engineering calculation since i've been in the company um because i joined as a systems engineer and the companies then supported me with training and development around the specifics of being a systems engineer um but 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 i think what was of importance when i was recruited and continues to be the case now is the behavioral set that you bring and the way of thinking and and um the willingness to learn and recognize that you are on a journey when you join the company you know, we're not expecting a finished product. There's there's the support and the development which will be provided to to assist you with that. Yeah, fantastic answer. Yeah, so I think you know overall, then you know it's it's about you know you'll, you'll get that information as you go. Essentially, I don't think it's a decision that needs to be made at the university stage. Is essentially what you're saying, right? It's it's something yeah. that you learn. You, you you can divine later on. There's a load more questions that I just want to cover off myself because a lot of it is about how do we apply for roles. So a lot, a lot um, after this session, um, probably Monday or Tuesday next week, whenever I've got time to, to, to go through this event, we're going to be sending through a ton of information about um, sort of the graduate schemes. We're going to be sending through the websites that you need to be going to. There's a lot of questions around that. Um, I, we've actually all, already covered a lot of these as well. So talking about the recruitment process, talking about work experience, you know, um, you, you said before, Steve, it's always available. You should always be um, uh, ready to, to, to apply for something like that. So we've covered a lot of that. So I don't, I can't see any other, so a, a, another one here. So what are the roles in supply chain management and consultancy for graduates? I think a lot of these are best covered off um, in an email afterwards, if we can send out a lot of information around how to apply for these different roles. Um, so I think that's it for now. Um, yeah, I think yeah, a lot of, the, there's actually one more question here 
um, that might be worth answering. So I'm a, a mechanical engineer undergrad pursuing a master's of engineering management. What discipline would better suit me? So it's a similar sort of question, so similar sort of answer um, to, to the last one. You know, it's not, it's not necessarily going for that in, in discipline initially. It's about um, finding out uh, that sort of information as you go. So, yeah, I think that's it. Um, thank you so much, both of you. I mean, we've only got two minutes left anyway. So thank you so much for your time. It's been absolutely incredible. And, um, yeah, it's, it's been fantastic finding out about um, how much more complicated submarines are than rocket ships. And next time I speak to a rocket engineer, I'll, <laughs> I'll let him know. <laughs> Oh, I know. <laughs> um, That's so, great. Uh, fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, and yeah, I'll, 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 I'm sure I'll catch up with both of you at some point in the near future. And uh, thank you for all the impact you're, you're going to be making for the people on here today and also the people who are going to be receiving this at a later date. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Dale. Thanks, Justin. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Goodbye.